Hey guys, welcome. Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> Today's video is going to be a dedicated reading vlog for Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. This is the latest sci-fi horror that hit shelves today. I know many of you are anticipated or are excited for this book, so I just thought I would share my journey with you guys. I hope you guys enjoy this video, this reading vlog. Stay tuned to the end though because I do have a surprise at the end of the video so don't miss out on that. And without further ado, let's jump into the reading vlog. I hope you guys enjoy it. Hey guys, so I am only, I just got to chapter three and chapter three is 18 pages in. So I'm only 18 pages in, but I wanted to come on here and give you my first impressions on Dead Silence, which is coming out in a few days. It is currently Saturday, so it's coming out on Tuesday. And I'm so excited to be reading this. I love a good horror sci-fi, and that's what this is. My first impressions are that I wanna get more into it. I want to read more. I need to find out what is going on on this ship. Okay, so we start off with uh, this team leader being questioned like what happened what's going on um you're telling us this story but we believe this other story and what they believe is that she has killed everybody on her team now she is off in space they are in this thing called the sniffler and their job is to keep the comms up and working but you come to find out that this is her last job, this is her last assignment, and then she will come back to Earth, and she will be at a desk job, and you can feel the anxiety coming off of her within the pages. Like, she cannot fathom not being in space. Like, that is her place. There are, like, no people, the black sky, the quietness, and you really feel this anxiety coming off of her because she doesn't want to be around people because that's what she keeps mentioning and there's going to be people on earth and so oh my gosh like I'm feeling those spots so much I don't think I would like to be in space with all that quiet and all that stillness uh, but I can understand her having anxiety and being anxious of being around people especially with her and her love for being up in space like I could not imagine and so we're going through that well when we started we started with now and then the second chapter was then so I'm figuring that we're going to be following two different timelines you know that she's having some sort of issues with some of her team and her being the leader um, you have a moment where she's trying to fix something outside of the spaceship and she is thinking about this is when we find out that this is going to be her last assignment because she's thinking about just unlatching and just drifting off into space because that's how much this is bothering her that this is going to be her last assignment and she's just deciding you know what i'm just going to float off into space i don't want to do this it would be worse going to a desk job back on earth like that's how much she's going through it. Obviously, she snaps out of it and she comes back inside the ship. Her name is Claire, the team lead. And then we have Kane. Kane is the medic there and he's the one that's in, like, pulls her in. And he's, like, really worried. You can see that he's looking at her. And that's his job, really, is to know the most out of everybody, make sure that they're in the right mind. So he's trying to, like, follow her. And in the middle of all of this, when she comes back in, we have Lourdes and she's saying that she's picking up a signal and she, the Claire gets all excited. She's like, wait, what? But one of the 
team members, he's like, listen, no, I don't want to do this anymore. We need to get back. Uh, they need to be somewhere at a certain time, I guess, to make it back to Earth. And he knows that if they go after this distress signal, they're not going to make it back. And so that's going to be another month of them being in space. And he doesn't want that. So he's fighting against like seeing what this distress signal is. And Claire is like, no, we need to find out what this is, because if they need help, they're not going to be getting it for the next month if we actually call dispatch and let them know what's going on. And the reason why they don't know what to do is because this distress signal is coming on on an old emergency line. They're not using the current emergency lines. And so they're wondering what's going on. Why are they using the old lines? Is this really a distress call? What's going on? And they figured out that the line that they're using for the emergency broadcast is from 25 years ago or 15 to 25 years ago. So it was way back when. So they're using old lines to let out an emergency distress so they're like we don't know what to do but claire is like no we're gonna figure out what this is let's go and she gets everybody in order and they're about ready to go and figure out what this distress call is and i am itching to find out because obviously that's that's where the action is gonna happen but while i was reading this I was thinking about two books, uh, one in particular, which is the one I'm gonna show you right now because I loved this book so much and I haven't continued on with the series, but I really want to and it's a sci-fi horror and it's Hell on Mars. In this book, we get a signal, a distress signal from this other ship, the Felicity and the station actually, it's not a ship, it's a station. And when they go up there to see what was going on, they find them all dead and like this alien thing attacking them. Now, I don't know if that's what's gonna happen in here. I don't know if this is like human horror or alien horror. I haven't read the synopsis, so I don't know. But I remember loving this one so much and I'm thinking of this book while I'm reading this one which is pretty cool if you haven't read hell on mars i highly recommend it there is like eight books in the series most of them are really really short like this it's not like phenomenal writing like the writing in dead silence is much better but it's enjoyable it's super enjoyable and it's super creepy there's some scenes in here that really freaked me out and anyways i just thought i would bring this one up because it's really reminding me of of this book so whatever so far so good it's gripped me and i can't wait to find out what's going on I am freaking loving this. So I am at the halfway mark of Dead Silence and I'm really still enjoying this. I find that when I start reading it, I don't want to put it down. I just want to continue and continue and continue. We have gotten to the other ship already and I am loving this part of the story. I think this is what I just look i was looking forward to the most and i think it's what everybody's looking forward to it's the point of the story is finding this lost uh space shift or aircraft carrier or spacecraft whatever you want to call it but i'm having a hard time like remembering that we're in space and not in the water because the ship that they have found it's a really old ship it's like 20 years ago and this ship was lost uh, they had lost they lost communication with it. They tried to look for it and never found this spaceship and so These people get this distress call and They go out to it and they actually find this ship and it's called the Aurora I hate saying that name Aurora. I have such a hard time, but it's called the Aurora and it was this spacecraft that was built this luxury spacecraft and it was modeled after a like cruise ship but for space and only the wealthiest of the wealthiest had money to buy a ticket and it was supposed to be like just this luxury spacecraft where just people went on like if they were going on a cruise the water faucets were made of gold uh they had like three tiers of like 
I guess different levels like platinum and this and that they had different floors um, movie stars athletes these kinds of people were the type of people that had that went that had the money to buy these tickets on this ship and this was the first time the first um, trip and again they lost all communication and they never knew what happened with the aurora this has been this mystery for 20 years 20 25 years um and these people come across it they happen to not stumble but they hear the distress call and they go to it and they are just like in awe that they have found the aurora now they want to claim this spaceship they want to claim it they want to bring it back but they're going through all these scenarios of what could go wrong why was this covered up now there are all these people dead in there i mean it's been 20 plus years that this ship has been floating in space there are dead bodies in there there this was a working vacation trip and so uh, they're deciding to go into the ship to find out to see what happened find out what's going on and they want to take something from the ship so that they can lay claim to it so when they go back and they do uh, start the process of bringing the ship back but again they're playing all these scenarios on to why the spaceship was not found what's going on and all this stuff so they have gone inside they've seen everything in there and they have gone back to the sniffer 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 all right so i ran out of space on my card so i can't remember what i was saying but um they've gone back i think it was that they've gone back to their spaceship spacecraft their little i think it's called the sniffer and they're trying to come up with a plan to see how they're going to tackle the spaceship if they're gonna like take it with them if they're going to just grab stuff if they're just going to check around in there and so I just I really loved the part where we go into the spaceship I want to say cruise because that's what it was supposed to be it was supposed to be like a luxury space cruise type of thing but I'm really enjoying it I want to see what else happens uh, we've gone in there initially they're in there a second time now and they're trying to figure out what happened to these people if it was an environmental problem with it if it was an engine problem and what happened in there there seems to be like suicides murders and then death from exposure so they're finding all these things and they just don't know now they're trying to look for the log of the ship and they're trying to just figure out what happened now mind you while all of this is going on they are in the spacecraft that's like dark they all they have are their like helmet lamps and there's no gravity in there so everything is like floating around uh there's a scene where they go into the atrium and they look up and it's kind of like creepy so that factor like if you think about the fact that it's a dark spaceship and hello you're in space everything is black so there's like no light in there that adds to the creepy factor of it um we have just encountered a creepy scene with one of the team members that gave me a little bit of chills and I can't wait to explore more of that which is what I think is what we're going into now. Now while all of this is going on it's Claire which is the team leader is recounting the experience or what happened on the ship to these two people in this center that she's been taken to. I think I spoke about this earlier but she's telling these two people what happened on the ship because apparently nobody has survived and something really bad happened in there with the team members and she's the only survivor. So we're trying to figure that part also and these two people, these two members of this center that she has, she was taken to after they took her out of the Aurora or after they found her or they rescued her from the aurora i don't know what the what the deal is there yet these two people don't believe her there's a whole like backstory to claire as well of when she was a kid she went through some traumatic experience with her mom and other team members in another space hub i believe it was and she was the only survivor so now years later she's the only survivor again from this 
from the finding of the ship and this very big thing that happens in the ship that we don't know what happens yet but she's having hallucinations from it and she's seeing some of the team members while she's sitting there talking to the people i'm just having a great old time this is like really hitting all the points of interest for me um and i'm just going to continue reading to see what happens because i am super duper intrigued but still really enjoying it and i hope that we keep on with this pacing and i hope that I stay in love with it. So I have finished and this was almost a five star read for me. It didn't quite get there. It was a five star read all the way to the last quarter of the book, actually to the reveal of what happened on the Aurora and that bumped it down to four stars. But I mean, four stars is still incredible. I enjoyed the majority of this book. It's just that when the big reveal came, it's not what I would have wanted it to be if that makes sense. I didn't like what the cause of this whole ordeal was and what is the reason why this ship was left floating in space. And so uh, it was a little bit underwhelming. I wish it would have been a different outcome or a different reason. I think that would have left it at a five star read for me, but it was still super enjoyable and super atmospheric, especially the moments in the ship and envisioning it being all dark. And it's a darkness unlike what we can experience here on Earth because we have so many factors that give us light. But when you're in space, I mean, I've never been in space, but I can only imagine the darkness in that void because there is nothing up there but dark so imagine being in that dark it's almost like claustrophobic there was a scene in here that was so claustrophobic and it wasn't a super long scene it was a very short scene with Claire that had me like almost losing my mind it was <laughs> It was such a great scene. When a book makes you feel those kinds of emotions, it's just, it makes it that much better for me. This book would be great for people that have a hard time envisioning scenes. Now, I know that sounds super counterintuitive with, if you're a reader, you can envision and create scenes in your head, but the only reason why I'm mentioning this is because nine times out of 10, I have learned in life that if you feel a certain way or you experience things in a certain way or you deal with things in a certain ways, there is somebody out there that is going to uh, feel, experience, and deal with things that same kind of way. You know, sometimes when we feel like, oh, I'm, I'm alone in this, usually there's somebody else that can experience those things. So I know that there's somebody out there that has a hard time envisioning scenes as a whole. I am great at like, doing short little kinds of scenes or like let's say for example there's a room that's being described i can experience and i can envision the room in little pieces as it's being explained to me but i have a really hard time envisioning this whole one scene one room kind of situation i have to do it in little pieces and compartments if you're that same way i feel like this is great for you because it does a great job of like helping you see the scene in that same way. I mean, number one, we are in space. So there's just the one setting, but we are in this spaceship. So there's, I feel like a, sh a spaceship is very compartmentalized. You know, there's like rooms and areas. And so this works really well like that because you're going into the atrium and then you have a scene in the atrium or you're going into the bridge and you have one scene in the bridge. It's not like this wide, vast like scene or area. They're just little areas. So this is great for readers that are like that. I also feel like this is great for beginners in the sci-fi genre and also in the sci-fi horror genre. Like if you read sci-fi but you've never read sci-fi horror, I think this is great for you. There are some bloody and gory scenes in here, but I don't think it's too much. Now take that with a grain of salt because I am an extreme horror reader, so this might be subtle for me but might not be subtle for somebody else or for you. So take that in mind. But for me, it was very subtle. It had impact where it had to have impact. It was gory where it had to be gory. It was creepy where it had to be creepy. There was a couple of scenes in here that are in the pitch black dark. And mind you, one of the issues in this book is hallucinations. So pitch dark scene, hallucinations, I mean, fantastic. Um, but it's also great for people that 
have never read sci-fi but maybe have read horror and want to get into sci-fi this is great for you too because it wasn't very sci-fi so there are sci-fi terms in it but it's not too sci-fi where it will get you lost and you won't understand what you are reading and so that's why I think it's great for those two types of readers I had a great old time with this book I really did enjoy it again I wish the outcome would have been a little bit different or the reasoning would have been a little different but it's okay it was still an enjoyable time four stars is still a fantastic fantastic rating for this book let me know if you've read this book your thoughts on it if you're excited to read this book but before closing out this video I do have a little giveaway for a hardcover of this book but the giveaway is going to be happening over on my Instagram so if you want the opportunity to win this book number one subscribe to my channel if you haven't already then head on over to my Instagram account give me a follow over there and look for the picture that has the same picture as my thumbnail obviously I will be holding out this book and leave a comment over there on what is your favorite sci-fi horror book or just what is your favorite sci-fi book if you don't read horror and uh, that will enter you for a chance to win this book so don't miss out on this giveaway that is everything for this video you guys thank you so so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!